This is about the survival of the human race, a sign of the times, an analysis, and a commentary. Typhoon Haiyan After one of the most powerful storms ever to strike the Philippines, the scale of the devastation and the desperation of the survivors were slowly coming into view. The living told stories of the dead or dying. The people swept away in a torrent of seawater. The bodies strewn haphazardly among the wreckage. Photos from the hard-hit city of Tacloban showed vast stretches of land swept clean of homes. And reports emerged of people who were desperate for food and water, raiding aid convoys and stripping the stores that were left standing. Typhoon Haiyan ravaged cities, towns, and fishing villages when it played a deadly form of hopscotch across the islands of the central Philippines. By some estimates, at least 10,000 people may have perished in Intaclaban alone. May the Lord rest their souls, bearing across palm-fringed beaches and plowing into frail homes with a force that by some estimates approached that of a tornado. Haiyan delivered a crippling blow to this country's midsection. The culprit increasingly appeared to be a storm surge that was driven by those winds, which were believed to be among the strongest ever recorded in the Philippines, lifting a wall of water onto the land as they struck. By some accounts, the winds raged ashore at 190 miles per hour as aid crews struggled to reach ravaged areas the storm appeared to lay bare some of the perennial woes of the Philippines, the country's roads and airports, long starved of money by corrupt and incompetent governments, are some of the worst in Southeast Asia, and often make traveling long distances a trial in the best of times. On Monday, clogged with debris from splintered buildings and shattered trees, the roads and the storm's path were worse, slowing rescue teams. Although deadly storms are not unusual in the Philippines, Typhoon Haiyan appears to stand apart, both in the ferocity of its winds, which some described as sounding like a freight train, and in its type of destruction. The usual cause of death from typhoons in the Philippines is from mudslides and river flooding as waterways swell with rainwater. So when Haiyan spread across the islands, some officials and weather experts in the Philippines thought they had witnessed something of a miracle. The storm that lit up social media for days of dire warnings was thought to have mostly spared the islands because it did not linger long enough to dump a deluge of rainwater. What they did not factor into their hopeful assessments was a storm surge, as some reports said, was 13 feet in Tacloban and which left a trail of destruction that in some ways mirrored the aftermath of tsunamis. One photo of a large ship that was stranded on land resembled images from Japan in 2011 when an earthquake sent a wall of water crashing into its northeastern shore while it was unclear that the power of the storm was tied to climate change. The surge may serve as another reminder to low-lying cities of the need to prepare for the worst. President Aquino had urged residents to leave low-lying areas, but he did not order an evacuation. On Sunday, he turned some stricken areas and declared a state of calamity, a first step in the release of emergency money from the government. Poor neighborhoods fared especially badly, with virtually no structures left standing except a few government buildings. With no police officers in sight, people had begun grabbing food and other items off pharmacy and grocery store shelves. News reports from Tacloban told of how officials were unable to get an accurate death count because law enforcement and government personnel could not be found after the storm. Tacloban's mayor was reported to have been holding onto his roof before being rescued, according to the Philippine Daily Inquirer. The damage reports seemed to be mainly from Tacloban, where aid has so far been concentrated, 
and not from the many fishing communities that line the coast. The coastal areas can be quite vulnerable. In many cases, you have fishing communities right up to the shoreline, and they can be wiped out by a powerful storm surge. The disturbing reports of the lack of reports, and the areas that are cut off could be quite severely hit. In one town, the winds toppled a locally famous tree with a trunk roughly a yard in diameter. The tree had withstood every typhoon for more than a century. Again, this was one of the most powerful typhoons ever to hit the Philippines. It's also another sign of the end of times as we know them. Transition days, which is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. Because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? And that should be a very important question to ask. Luke chapter 21 verse 25 And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring 26 humans hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken 27 and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory 28 and when these things begin to come to pass and look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws near 29 and he spoke to them a parable behold the fig tree and all the trees 30 when they now shoot forth ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand 31 so likewise ye when ye see these things come to pass know ye that the kingdom of God is near at hand 32 verily I say unto you this generation shall not pass away until all be fulfilled 33 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away 34 and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with partying and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come upon you unawares 35 for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth 36 watch thee therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And all these are more signs of the times.